Hi everyone, my name is Cyprian and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a really easy, quick and cozy crochet cowl. Today I'm going to be using homespun yarn, but you can also use pretty much any chunky yarn that you want, but I do need to mention that the yarn that works the best for this crochet cowl is one with a bit of texture. So you can see the homespun here has a pretty little ripple texture and I think that this makes all the difference to how this crochet cowl turns out. Today I'm going to be using this skein of homespun yarn and this cowl you should be able to make an entire cowl out of one skein. Although in saying that I do need to mention that there's been a few times that I have made this cowl and I haven't had quite enough and I wondered why so I started actually weighing my skeins when I bought them and I noticed that I'm not always getting full skeins. I don't know why that is but I can say that they're not always created equal. So if you're using homespun, I would recommend buying just a little bit more. And also because it does use exactly one skein for me, if you have a different gauge, it may use slightly more. So all you need to get started today is this yarn and a 19 millimeter hook. And it is really easy to change the size. I have four sizes available on my blog for this from toddler to adult. Do the counts for all the sizes so that you can make them for anybody that you want to. So gather up your yarn and your hook and we'll be up and we'll get started. Okay, so what is great about um, the homespun if you're using this is that you can pull your yarn from the center and also from the outside. So you can just use it that way using two strands together. Now, one thing that you can do is if you're using a different kind, you can take two strands and work it into a ball or, of course, just hold a strand from each skein. So um, today I'm actually going to make myself the preteen size. It's just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 30 stitches, but I will put the other counts up here if you want to make a different size. So let's go ahead and chain 30, holding those two strands together and this massive hook. Uh, and of course, if you don't have a 19 millimeter hook, you can use a smaller one. It just won't be quite as fluffy, but I would try to keep the hook as big as possible. So if you have a 15 millimeter, use that. 11.5, you can try using that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain my 30 stitches and then we'll come back and meet up and start with the first round. Okay, so I have just finished my 30 stitches and all we're going to be doing next is joining to our first chain so that we can form the circle of the cowl because this cowl we are going to be pulling over our head. It's not going to be doing up with buttons or anything like that. So just make sure when you're joining that um, this is laid flat and then it's not twisted at all because if it twists it's going to be difficult to work with. And another thing I'm going to do is if your yarn's fraying like mine, I'm just going to do a knot here. And then just a loose one so that I can weave in those ends later. So I've inserted my hook and then I'm just going to pull that through all those loops. And then that's the foundation chain made and the foundation of the cowl. So now we're just going to chain one and turn and then we're going to work into that first chain and we're going to work a single crochet. And we're going to continue Oops, sorry. we're going to continue to work single crochets all the way across. Now because we have four, four sets of yarn that we're working with here, so two here and two at the bottom, I like to use my finger to make sure that I'm inserting my hook in the right place so that you make sure that you've got your back loops here and your front loops underneath. Okay, so you just insert, yarn over, pull up, and finish your single crochet. Okay, and then I'm just going to go along to the next one and again make sure that I'm inserting in the correct place. So I'm going to continue to work the single crochet all the way around and you're just going to want to double check your counts 
and they're going to stay the same as your starting chain. So if your starting chain was 30, your count at the end of round one should be 30 as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. And don't worry, I know it looks very loosey-goosey right now, but trust me, it is beautiful. The texture is going to come out just right. So bear with me and I'll meet up with you at the end of round one. Okay, so I have finished my round of single crochet and I counted and I'm short a stitch. So all I'm going to do, I'm not going to rip out all my work, is I'm just going to pop in another single crochet at the bottom or sorry, another single crochet in the last stitch, and that'll give me that extra one that I am looking for. So all we need to do now is join with a slip stitch, chain work, and turn. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to have double crochet, and you got to sort of keep your stitches under control here because we're working with four strands of yarn. So I'm using my finger to guide me here. So you're just going to insert and do your half double crochet, followed by a slip stitch in the next stitch. We're just going to do a slip stitch in there, followed by a half double crochet. followed by a slip stitch in the next. So I'll put that into the video, but that's the pattern that you're gonna work until you finish the end of the round. So half double crochet, oops, followed by slip stitch. And again, just use your finger as a guide to where you need to be working those stitches. So I'm gonna to continue to work this round and then we'll meet up, we'll see you soon. Okay, I'm at my last stitch here, so you should be finishing up with a slip stitch in your last stitch. And then all we're going to be doing is joining to the first half double crochet, which can be a little tricky to find. So again, use your fingers to find those four loops. You're just going to join that with a slip stitch, chain one, and turn. And then you're, you're going to have to figure out your stitches here. So this was a half double crochet and this was your last slip stitch. This is the one that you want to work into. So you can just hang on to that with your fingers because it does get confusing when you're joining and chaining. So what you're going to do is the same as round two. You're going to work a half double crochet into that slip stitch, which was the last stitch of round two. And then you're going to be working a slip stitch into your half double crochet. And that is your second last stitch of the previous round. Then again, you're going to work a half double crochet to your slip stitch here. here. And then you're going to work a slip stitch into the half double crochet. Now, as long as you're working your stitches correctly, and you're working all your half double crochets into your slip stitches and all your slip stitches into your half double crochets, the pattern's gonna work out perfectly. So the easiest way to remember where you need to be working, working your half double crochets into a slip stitch, which is a smaller, shorter stitch. And then you can easily tell where the half double crochets are from the previous round because it has this diagonal stitch here and that's where you want to be working all your slip stitches. So as long as you're doing it correctly, then your texture will come up perfectly. So I'm going to finish round three and then I'll meet up with you for round four. Okay, so I'm at the end of round three and I've ended with a slip stitch again, which tells me I am working my stitches correctly. And then we're just going to join to that first half double crochet here, which again, you got to sort of find the top loops with your fingers and slip stitch and then chain one and turn. And remember again, wait for every round, you're going to have your turning chain, you're going to have your slip stitch and you're going to need to find that last slip stitch that you worked of uh, the previous round. Okay, so 
This is actually it. It's a one row repeat or one round repeat, making it a super easy cowl to make in front of the TV. And it's lots of fun. Um, so I'm going to put up for every size here the final measurement because then you can work your cowl till it reaches that. And I'll also put a row out because, you know, sometimes you're crocheting in the car and you don't have a measuring tape. And there's my nice hair that I'm losing every day. Um, so I'll meet up with you once I've reached my height. And again, if you want something a little bit warmer, keep going. I can make it nice and tall and full so that you can pull it over your face. Hey, before we keep going, I want to jump in and show you how the texture should be looking. Hoping this isn't too dark, I turned my light off so that we could get more of like a 3D effect. But as you can see here, all these stitches that are going across are lining. Okay, so I have finished the height of my cowl and the very last thing that we're going to do to finish it off is simply work a single crochet in each stitch around. So the only thing that you want to make sure of when you're doing this is that your work is turned right side out. So you can tell um, by your beginning round if your stitches look here, or sorry, if your stitches look like this, then this is your right side. I don't think it actually matters that much because when the cowl's on, you're not going to be able to tell. And then, oh, this is my little stitch marker because... I just reorganized everything and couldn't find anything. Um, yep, so all we're going to be doing is simply working a single crochet each stitch around. And now that you've finished all your single crochets, all you have to do is fasten off. So you just join with a slip stitch, yarn over, and pull through. And then all you're going to do is just weave in this end here. Anyways, I'd love to hear how you made out, what color you made it in, what was the yarn that you chose. This is absolutely one of my favorite cowls to make. And this took me, for the time that I was crocheting, probably 40 minutes to make. Anyways, that's everything for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification button it's a little bell and then that way every time i release a video you should get it in your feed okay thanks again for being here and until next time bye bye